Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm having a quick look at Latent Diffusion once again. Why? Because, well, in July they released some more code and models here. Retrieval Augmented Diffusion models are now available. See this section. All right, there it is. Retrieval Augmented Diffusion models. There's a paper there. If you want to go and have a look at the paper, you can download the PDF and indulge yourself in some extreme nerdery. But uh, basically, just to get started, you will have your previous Latent Diffusion environment ready to go and then you can just pip install all those torch metrics and cornea and uh, pip install the inops and you've got all the stuff that you need extra in your environment to run yeah okay all right awesome uh, of course you will need to download the new model as well it's a 768 by 768 so it's a bigger model so the old one was 256 by 256 without changing the default width and height so yeah this is uh this is a lot bigger you'll create some very high resolution images awesome awesome right so let's uh, let's do this shall we yeah let's do this all right okay let's pop that in there and i will just change the output directory as well because i'm like that there we go Put that in there and uh, I will call this a uh, bear. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is prompt. A happy bear reading a newspaper, oil on canvas, everything absolutely default. This won't take very long at all, apart from the fact that it will crash. Yeah, yeah, because it uses absolutely tons of VRAM. Yeah, so it'll go through, it'll get, get that far and then it'll go, hey, hey, I'm, I'm going to use every single last ounce of your VRAM because it uses Vitel 14 and Vitel 14 uh, uses every last ounce of your VRAM. So there you go, CUDA out of memory. So the fix for that basically is just to change the batch size, which is number of samples in this case to one. So then when you do that, you pop in there, number of samples to one. Yeah. Okay. Then assuming you've got something like a 3090, it will run. So while that's doing its thing, let's just go over my environment here. So you know everything I'm using. I'm using Ubuntu 2004 because I'm two years out of date. I've got an NVIDIA GPU with the NVIDIA drivers and the CUDA toolkit installed. And I am using Anaconda for my virtual Python environment. As mentioned, I have got a previous environment, the existing latent diffusion one, and I just installed those extra things in it and downloaded the models. Now, there's also some massive dumps as well that you can download. Uh, this is uh, shown a little bit later down, but this is this is part of the retrieval model. You basically got the art bench and open images. Um, I would basically suggest that you completely ignore the open images um, for the disk space needed and the power required to do the querying on that database. Um, I honestly don't think that the difference in the image quality is is really worth it. Um, I'll, I'll show you a bit of that in a minute. In fact, a lot of the rest of this video is going to be going through a lot of art styles and showing you all the different things that this can do. And yeah, yeah, so you'll be looking at a lot of images. This is the technical bit at the front, the technical bit at the front. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, yeah, you want the scan ind indices as well. That gives you the art bench one. Uh, yeah, like I say, ignore open images. If you don't want to ignore open images, if you've got a massive computer and you really do want to do it, then make sure you've got at least 128 gig of RAM I personally made a 96 gig swap file to give myself 128 gig of RAM because you will need that in order to build the indices. Yes, it really is that powerful. And of course, you'll need a whole bunch of extra disk space to hold the download, the open images zip, which unzips at 20 gig and the indices that are created for that as well. Yeah, yeah. OK, so like I say, I'll show you that in a minute. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll go back to our bear. Let's have a look at our bear and we pop in here. We've got our bear. And there he is. Got a grid with a bear. I, di I disable that later because I'm only making one image, but there he is, a, a bear reading a book all on canvas. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Okay. Okay. So let's let's just go through some of these little options. So this is what I this is basically what I normally use here. So we'll run through this one as well. Give that a few seconds to run. So this I am doing a surreal painting of a gothic house and uh, using the brutalism art style there. Now the scale you can change as well, basically higher numbers. We'll go down here and see what they say about scale. So as a rule of thumb, higher values of scale produce better samples at the cost of a reduced output diversity. So scale you can play around with. I'll show you some different variants on scale there from uh, five all the way up to 50, just so you can see what scale does. Uh, end samples, uh, I'll go through all these options as well in a minute. Uh, end samples is basically a batch size. Uh, n iterations, number of iterations, so how many times are you going to do that batch size? So this will create eight images. 
Uh, skip grid I always do because I'm setting number of samples to one. So it's a bit pointless having a grid with one image in it. It's basically just going to duplicate the images. So yeah, that's fine. Uh, and I change the output directory because I like to give things names. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's have a look at this full list of optional arguments. Uh, so you can just run the uh, knn2image.py with the minus h or minus minus help and this will this will print the help out for you. So that's that's how you get this list. Yeah. Okay. Right. So obviously you're going to need the prompt. That's the prompt to render the out. Uh, that's where you're going to save your results to, just like it says there. Skip grid. Cause yeah. Yeah. If you're if you're you know if you've got an A100 and 40 gig of VRAM, then yeah, you can probably do three samples at a time. By all means, create a little grid. Um, <laughs> and repeat. So yeah, number of repeats in clip latent space. PLMS. If you want to use PLMS sampling instead of DDIM, uh, the DDIM ETA as well. You can change uh, number of iterations, width and height. So if you don't want it 768 by 768, you want it you know 1920 by 1080 or some other strange aspect ratio. You can do that too. It doesn't have to produce square images. Yeah, yeah. Number of samples, as we've already mentioned, is basically like the batch size, number of rows in your grid if you're making one. Scale, we've already been through uh, from files. So you can have loads and loads and loads of prompts in a file if you want. So you can make a file with all your text prompts in. Uh, config and checkpoints. Well, basically, there's only one config and one model at the moment, but there will be some new ones in the future. Or, of course, if you train your own, then uh, yeah, you can change the config and checkpoint. But for the most part, you'll you'll leave that the same. Uh, clip type is Vitel 14. So obviously you can't use things like uh, VitB32 because it's the wrong size, but you can use Vitel 14 336px, for example. Um, so yeah, if you want to use a different clip type, that's fine. Uh, and then these last three database used neighbors and uh, KNN all sort of go together. So if you are um, using the use neighbors option, then you want to change the uh, number of included neighbors there and uh, which database you go through. Now, as mentioned, the open uh, Images database is enormous, and uh, I, I can't see any benefit in using it as yet. Uh, somebody please do tell me if I'm completely wrong. Uh, another thing to note is Artbench Impressionism in the data RDM retrieval databases directory is spelt wrong. Uh, so yeah, it, it's spelt impression sim. So just, just rename that, and then you can use uh, the Artbench Impressionism database. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so that's that's a quick overview of some of the options, and we'll have a, a little look at our, our output there. So there we've got a Gothic house samples. A voila, a Gothic house. Yeah, okay, awesome, awesome. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, nice high resolution. Yeah, yeah, all right, okay. So that's, that's a nice, cool Gothic house. Let's go and have a look at all these different things. So a bunch of these are all the same, just so we can compare, uh, but I'll just show you the open images one and uh, so this is uh, this is an example using that open images database the one that's massive and um, yeah I can't honestly see much of an improvement in the images over the, the not using the database <laughs> at all uh, so yeah yeah uh, you know if it, if it had been astoundingly different then maybe maybe but no no, it doesn't seem to be. Right, so let's have a quick look at the scale. So this is this is the same prompt, uh, basically that, that bare one. So this is a nerdy rodent oil on canvas, and this is scale five. So this is like the default. So that's that's what it looks like, the default. Yeah, that's scale five. Looks all right, doesn't it? Looks all right. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's, let's put the scale up to six, shall we? Okay, all right. So this is scale six. Yeah, uh, yeah, still, still looks... Fairly samey, still still reasonable quality. Yeah, I, I quite like those. All right, okay. How about if we put the scale up to eight? Yeah, yeah, ooh, ooh, okay. I, I actually do, the, the, yeah, they're sort of making faces a little bit better there. I actually do quite like that scale at eight. Yeah, that's not bad, that's not bad. All right, okay, so can, can we put it up even more? Yes, we can. Let's put the scale up to 10. I'll close that one down. Let's put the scale up to 10. There we go. All right. So that's that's looking pretty good. Personally, 10, somewhere between about 7 and 10 is my favorite scale. Let's, uh, let's give the game away now. So there it is. Scale 10. Yeah. All right. OK, that's pretty nice. All right. Let's let's go even higher, shall we? Yeah. Should we go to scale 20? OK, so this is what we look like with scale 20. Oh, OK. Actually still quite good, but you, you may be able to see there. Yeah. You know, I, I, there's not much of a a lack of diversity there. They do still quite look quite different and they are quite good quality. I'd, yeah, yeah, 20 is not too bad. 20 is not too bad, but 
Let, let's go up to 25, and it'll slowly become obvious that the uh, basically the colours are becoming a bit. Hmm. Yeah. So let's scale 25. That's quite a nice nerdy rodent, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, I do quite like those. So yeah, it's got it's got some good consistency and coherence in the faces, but let's let's pump it even higher, shall we? Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's go to let's go to a scale of 50, and and we'll see what happens if you put the scale too high. So there we go. So that's what happens if you put the scale too high. Uh, you may like that. I don't know, but personally, I think that 50 is is a little bit high. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, that's that's all the different variants of scale. Uh, sort of between 5 up to 50 so it, it can make it look a bit better if you put the scale up but but don't go too high but don't go too high okay so here now we've got all the various different databases so this is the uh, the art bench one so we're doing these uh using art nouveau style for example here you go yeah yeah that's uh that's an elf princess in an art nouveau style looks looks pretty good doesn't it sorry an elf, yes, that is an elf princess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty good. We got a, a baroque one. Yeah, yeah. You can see the baroque style in there. So with these, I have uh, here's a, a little example of how I created some of these. So this is uh, this is the styles, but without using the database. So I'll, I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, but basically, I did portrait of an elven princess. Uh, whatever the styles are, it's got the list of all the various databases you can use there, Art Nouveau, Baroque, Expressionism, yeah, etc. So for those ones I did with, well, these Artbench ones, I, I added the style in the prompt and also used the, the relevant database to go with that as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's there's more of the Baroque elf princesses. They, they look quite good, don't they? they? And they all look nice and different. Uh, so we've got an Expressionism one here. So elf princess with Expressionism, as you can see again. It's got a nice different style. They all, they all they all look pretty good to me. They all look pretty good. So this is the small one as well, the teeny tiny art bench database. Absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. So here's impressionism. Yeah, as you can see again, the style has changed. Very impressionist. Yeah. All those elf princesses in an impressionism style. You've got post-impressionism as well. Similar, but you know, yeah. Yeah. Just so you can see what the style looks like. That's the post-impressionism style. Then we've got uh, realism. Let's have a look at realism. There you go. Quite shiny on the old realism there, isn't it? But yeah, that's using Artbench realism database. Yeah, okay. And then we've got the Artbench Renaissance. Yeah, so look at that one. There we go. So there's a an elf princess in a Renaissance style. <laughs> also pretty good. Do quite like those. Do quite like those. And we've got romanticism. Yeah, yeah, you can see it there. They've got the, the longer, curlier hair and all these flowers and things around the outside. Yeah, yeah, so that's the romanticism style. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, and we've got uh, surrealism. This is the default uh, if you're using, uh, if you turn it on. So there we've got surrealism. Seem, seem to get some extra trees in the background for this. So it's, it seems, uh, yeah, 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 I like those. Do quite like the surrealism. Do quite like the surrealism. It is one of my favourites. Uh, and then the Yukioe, which are very different. I also very much like these. So there you go. There's some elf princesses. The Yukioe style. Yeah. Nice, aren't they? I think, I think it's better eyes. Better eyes on these. The eyes go a bit weird. Eyes go a bit weird. Okay. So here's the same sort of thing. Just to show you if you don't use the Artbench Yukioe database. That, yeah. Okay, let's, let's just show these side by side shall we there we go that that one on the left there is using the database that one isn't using the database yeah yeah so th this this is how much difference using the database makes not very much that i can see yes you're right you're right not very much at all <laughs> uh, i've got a different model here as well so this is the uh, vitel 14 336 so potentially slightly better quality yeah yeah still very good still very good still like those very much but that's just to show you can use a different clip model and here the difference if you use 100 ddim steps rather than the default as 50 so these take 10 seconds to generate rather than five seconds to generate each honestly not that much difference 
not that much difference. I think 50 is still pretty good. I mean, they are slightly better, slightly better. Let's let's have a look at the uh, there's the default 50. Yeah, the default 50 hundred. It's, it's it's difficult, isn't it? That's that's yeah, it's difficult, difficult. I think 50 is fine. Honestly, 50 is fine. So yeah, all right. So let's go through all these different art styles. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for this? I, I may even try and put some timestamp things in this so that you can. Yeah, yeah. I know. Right. Okay. So here is a deep dive into these various art styles. Fifty-four different art styles for your visual enjoyment. Okay. Right. So here we have a uh, portrait of an elven princess, ASCII art style. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. There's the ASCII art style, yeah? Whoops, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's kind of, kind of weird, isn't it? And it is indeed an ASCII art style. And we've got abstract art style. It is, it is a little bit more abstract. That's, that's quite strange. It is quite strange. Got some very green eyes and goes, yeah. All right, that's abstract art. We've got art brute there. Let's have a look at that. Ooh. Okay, as you can see, that's that's very different again. It's a bit more sort of drawn, comic-like feel to it. Yeah, okay. And we've got academic art. Yeah, that's a little bit more sort of realism in there. Yeah, yeah, let's see. It's the academic art style. Quite nice, quite nice. Art deco art style. Yeah, yeah, you ready for those? Okay, there you go. Ooh. Yeah, that is that is very Art Deco, isn't it? Very different, very different. Yeah, yeah, okay. And uh, Arte Pavera, and uh, apologies for my pronunciation of any of these. Uh, now these look a lot more like photos, don't they? These look a lot more like photos. And some of these expressions are a classic. I mean, the eyes, look at the eyes on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bauhaus, what have we got here? Bauhaus, there you go. It's it's quite Bauhaus, isn't it? It's a little bit Bauhaus, not massively Bauhaus, but mm, yeah, you, you can you can sort of see some of the hints in there, some of the hints in there. Brutalism, which is interesting because obviously brutalism is architecture, but I'm I'm doing princesses, and uh, it's it's kind of made them out of concrete, from what I can see. That it's like it's like princess statues. That one's a little bit green, but yeah, yeah, that one's quite nice. Do quite like that, yeah. Anyway, uh, classical realism. Let's have a look at that style. So there's a classical realism style, very classical look there. Yeah, yeah. It's got a, a lot of jewelry on this. Yeah, and some some good hair, some tiaras and things going on. Often, of course, it misses out the the face, and it will do different portions of the princess. But hey, but hey, <laughs> your mileage may vary. That's why I uh, I do eight samples each time just to get a, a good few. Uh, concrete art, again, very similar to the, the brutalism. It's almost like it's making statues of these uh, elf princesses. That's that's like an elf princess frozen in carbonite, isn't it? Mm. And we got uh, cubo futurism. So a little bit of uh, cubism going on there, and a little bit of futurism. Yeah, yeah. So you got some of the certainly the colours, the lines are different. Yeah, that's the cubo futurism. You got uh, Dada, which isn't, it isn't really very Dada, to be honest, but it's, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it, it changes the output style a bit, but in my opinion, not, not very Dada. That does not, not, not look very Dada. But hey, uh, deconstructivism, we'll have a little look at that. Yeah, yeah, again, sort of, sort of. We, we, we're, we're getting some, some lines here. Which uh, yeah, it's like mixing mixing the two styles, portraits and it's, yeah, that's a that's a good crown. I quite like that, quite like that one. But uh, yeah, there's a little bit of constructive deconstructivism in there. <laughs> uh, digital art, the one that works very well on Dali too, and uh, it's it's not too bad on this one. Yeah, it's not too bad on this one, but uh, it's missed a lot of the uh, the faces off. That's that's quite nice. It's sort of like peacock feather hair going on there. Yeah. Yeah, I quite like that. I quite like that. And uh, Fauvism, Fauvism, however you pronounce these, you got the uh, got the great colours going on there. Yeah, yeah, 
That's a, a very definite style change there, isn't it? Look at those colours. Look at those colours. Yeah, yeah. And we've got fine art next. Let's have a look at these fine art ones. Are they fine art? C kind of. Kind of. They are. It's, yeah. It's it, it, it sort of put the, the details in there and it's not bad. It's, it's quite close to realism. Quite close to realism. Same sort of shading and things it's, it puts in. That's very nice. Okay, let's have a look at folk art. There we go, we've got some folk art. Okay, now that's very different. Again, it's sort of changed from the realism to a, a more sort of comic-y, drawn illustration style and added all these uh, extra intricacies on there as well. So yeah, yeah, folk art really changes stuff a lot. I like, I quite like that. That's, uh, yeah, that's got some, some weird depth to it as well as yeah, texture and things. Yeah. I like those. I like those. So yeah, folk art, quite quite nice, quite weird. Goes very well with portraits. Futurism, again, not so much futurism in there. Probably better with buildings, but uh, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of futurism going on. Some colour changes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then we've got uh, some geometric art styles in here. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so a geometric elf princess. Yeah, yeah. Does the eyes, everything else, geometric? So that's that's actually quite nice. I do I do actually quite like those. Okay, so we've got some hypermodernism next. Hypermodernism, yeah, yeah. There we go. Mm, that's a very large eyebrow, very large eyebrow, and perhaps not not the most impressive style, but. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hyperrealism. How about that? Everyone likes a little bit of hyperrealism. Hmm. Yeah, sort of. Again, you can see it does the sort of cheek, uh, <laughs> cheek shading even, and uh, yeah, under chin shading and three nostrils. Perfectly normal. Perfectly normal. Yeah. Eyes. Two. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Perfectly normal eyes. Yeah. 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 So yeah, hy hyperrealism always tends to freak out the features in these things. <laughs> Uh, impressionism. Again, this is without the database. We've seen one with the database. There's an impressionism without the database. And yeah, that does a, a very good... You can see the sort of paint impressionism style that it's doing. Yeah, yeah. Some nice ones there. Some nice ones there. Okay. Uh, kinetic art. Kinetic art. No. No. There is there is no movement in here whatsoever. This is this this does not follow the kinetic art style. Yet at the same time, they look quite good. It's 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 more like a sort of Unreal Engine, isn't it? It's like a rendered art style, like a 3D rendered art style. <laughs> yeah, some of these expressions are just uh, yeah in a category of their own. Lowbrow, lowbrow art. Mm, again, not not so much. A little bit. You see the the cheek blush has gone, uh, you know, quite quite colourful. And ooh, yeah, there on the lipstick as well. Not massively lowbrow, but all right, but all right. Uh, I got Lyco again, a little bit, a little bit, but uh, yeah, fairly, fairly similar, fairly similar, but still, still pretty good. Uh, magical realism, yeah, as similar to realism, but it's it's got this extra background, so it puts all these uh, all these twiddly bits in, and makes it more more fancy. Got some trees in there as well for those. So yeah, sort of adds adds a little bit of sparkle with magical in there. Uh, maximalism, maximalism. There we go. Max. <laughs> yeah, that that really is quite maximalist. Yeah, we've put an absolute load of stuff. How much stuff can you put in there? And the answer is all the stuff. You can put all the stuff in there. So yeah, if you want lots and lots of things going on, maximalism is a very good way to do it. And of course, the opposite of that is you've got minimalism. So if you really don't care for that stuff and you just want a general sort of concept uh, of, of a, an elf princess, then there you go. Minimalism. Exceptionally. That's, yeah. I mean, you can tell it's a princess, can't you? You got, you got a necklace. That's it. <laughs> so yes, minimalism. It does, it does minimal, minimalism very well. I like that. Uh, Neoclassic art style as well. Yeah. Quite nice. I do quite like that one. Yeah, that does it very well. Look at the hair on that. It's quite magnificent hair, isn't it? Magnificent. Yeah. Yeah. That is a, that is a good art style. It seems to do that very well. It seems to do that very well. I like that. I like that a lot. And uh, Neo-Fauvism. 
again got the very bright colors it's yeah i mean like that kind of captures the essence of the style and yeah 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 that's that's quite nice that's quite nice nuclear art expect a lot of green hmm kind of kind of kind of they've all got the green eyes uh interesting green hair so yeah there, there is a bit of sort of uh an irradiated feel to them, yeah. Nuclear art, not too bad. Uh, objective abstraction, hmm, perhaps. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, that's that's not bad, is it? That is not bad at all. That is, uh, yeah, that is a very nice style. Look at that. Look at that. That's amazing. I really like that one. Whoa. Yes. Look at that. That is, yeah. Objective abstraction, very good for portraits. Very good for portraits. Now another classic one. Photorealism, yeah? Does that look photorealistic to you? Again, it's done all the shading, it does all this, it seems to do the cheeks and things with uh, with photorealism, put all the the shading stuff in, but uh, yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, whoa, weird stuff going on there. That's photorealism. Pan-futurism, so a little bit like futurism, but uh, yeah, probably better with buildings, probably better to have people with just one nose, but you know, you know. And the, the detail on there is quite nice. So yeah, yeah. Perhaps if you did pan futurism with buildings, it would it would look a lot better. Uh, pixel art, yeah. How do you reckon it will do with pixel art? Yeah. So so, so so. I mean, you can tell it's pixel art, can't you? You can tell it's pixel art. It really does change the style. It really does change the style. But uh, yeah, not that impressed. Not that impressed. Uh, pretty similar with uh, pontalism as well. You can tell. You can tell it's pontalism. It's not bad, not bad on the eyes there, uh, but it's it's kind of gone, kind of gone overboard on the dots. Kind of gone overboard on the dots, but still, not bad. Still not bad. Some of those are yeah, 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 yeah. You you could you could get there. Uh, post minimum post minimalism. Yeah, yeah. Now that's that's slightly better, slightly better than minimalism, because you've got yeah. It's still you can you can see. You can sense the minimalistic approach to it. It's got, you've got the clean faces. You haven't got so much shading. Yeah, and you've got like the essence, the very essence of the character captured there. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. How about some psychedelic art? Yeah? Okay, there you go. Psychedelic art style. Very, very, very good there. Lots of lots of crazy patterns going on. Yeah. Yeah, and of course you could use these as in image is to put them through disco diffusion and other things or through GFP GAN if you wanted to bring out the facial features or you know do an entirely different art style. These these are all basically just the same prompt, so you can see how the style changes with each one. And uh, here we've got uh, Kajar, assuming I can pronounce that. Whoa, okay, that's that's nice. Those are very different, aren't they? Yeah, very very different elf princesses. Look at the the detail on those. Those are wonderful, aren't they? Aren't those glorious pictures? Look at that. That's a fantastic style. That's a fantastic style. So yes, another another one recommended for portraits. And we've got one here. Uh, Raskash. Yeah, again, pronunciation. Not my forte. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. I mean, they don't look bad. Uh, I have to admit, I don't, don't exactly know what this style should look like. But... Uh, yeah, the, the output is pretty good. It's got, you know, it seems to put these borders around them. It seems to have extra details. We've got all these details going on. Yeah, yeah. Realism, a little bit like hyper-realism, only not so much. <laughs> so again, the shading with the cheeks and the chin and the strange eyes. Yeah, it does tend to double up on features a lot with realism. It's almost not worth putting realism or hyper-realism in if you actually want something to look realistic. Weird, huh? So retrofuturism again, probably better with architecture, but yeah, we've, we've got the colours, uh, we've got some of the shapes in there. That's that's pretty weird, kind of like it, kind of like it, but yeah, yeah, that's that's your retrofuturism going on there. Pretty nice, rococo, yeah, yeah, like a bit of rococo. Look at that, that's that's good, isn't it? That is good. Yeah, you got the hair, yeah, yeah, that is very rococo. Look at those wonderful hair things going on there. Magnificent. Glorious. Glorious hairdo. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very nice. Very nice, Rococo. Very nice. Okay. Let's have a stuckism. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Not 
massively stuck as a art style, but it's yeah, it's nice. It's nice. You've got the normal noses, apart from, you know, a little bit of thing going on. The the eyes, got some blue eyes in there. That's yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, we've got suprematism. Let's have a quick look at that. As you can see, yes, we have gone very geometric. Very geometric. That is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah? If you want some extremely artistic ones, yeah, that's not bad at all. That is not bad at all. Surrealism, usually my favourite. I do like a bit of surrealism. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? That is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the extra details and things going in there. A little bit of weirdness. Again, it tends to put this sort of frame in. But uh, yeah, we, we've now got extra earrings. Yeah, it's got a, a whole bunch of extra detail that it sort of puts in there for uh, surrealism. We've got uh, synthetism. Have a quick look at that. Ah, okay. Also very nice. Yeah, that's, that's like a sort of uh, icon or avatar style. Yeah, a little bit more basic. Yeah, nice, nice, very nice. Toyism, things that look like toys. Let's have a look. Yes, <laughs> we've got the uh, the bright primary colours. Yeah, yeah, a little bit like folk art in some way, but with the, uh, yeah, slightly more simplistic look to it. Uh, got to tonalism, let's go for the old tonalism there. Yeah, see, tonalism is a little bit more like what I would expect sort of photorealism to go with, you know, if you're looking for photorealistic. So there, there's tonalism. Again, got the semi-normal noses with interesting numbers of nostrils in there. Uh, Yukioe, we've, we've seen some of these already, but just to show you how awesome they are, I, I think you, I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look at that for Yukioe elf princess. That's amazing, isn't it? Isn't that amazing? That's, that's, that's brilliant. I like those. I like those. So yes, Yukioe uh, art style, very much like the portraits. Uh, <laughs> uh, underground comics style. There we go. Underground comics. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's close. It's close. It's close. Yeah. Yeah. Quite good. Quite good. We've got uh, Verdadism. Let's look at that one. Oh, again, not too bad. Not too bad. Little bit of detail, but not too much. A little bit of realism. Some massive earrings. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, vorticism as well. Let's have a look at vorticism. There we go. Yeah. Not not quite vorticism. <laughs> but it does it does change the uh, the style. You can almost see a little bit of construction work going on there. But yeah, yeah. Not quite vorticism. Not quite. And then just to show you the uh, maximalism, but using the open images database again. So, yeah, you remember the maximalism from last time. Let's let's have a little comparison, shall we? Maximalism. There we go. So, there without the database, and there with the database. I, I honestly prefer without the database. You know, this is meant to make it better, so far as I can tell. Honestly, no. I, I can't I can't see the uh, the resource usage really really covering that. So anyway, so there you go. There is a, a variety of styles, and obviously be sure to try your own as well. A very nice model, seven six eight by seven six eight retrieval augmented diffusion models, latent diffusion, excellent stuff. See you on the next one.